diaspora voting just do it but no we can't just do it but do it right this was the trend of conversation between participants at the just concluded national diaspora voting council which took place in abuja trust me this story is a must watch we also have big news as a nigerian who was to be hanged in saudi arabia for alleged drug trafficking has been freed trust me this story is a must watch this is your favorite show the diaspora and i'm your host coin Salah at date to be stay tuned we are tired of this waiting game we are tired of excuses at least 20 african countries have just concluded their diaspora voting why can't nigeria just do the same interesting conversation right now let's watch the discussion between participants at the just concluded national diaspora voting council enjoy countries like rwanda that are not up to a state in Nigeria. We start and champion their voting and is successful. Because every human being that is being denied of his right, we try to express it one way or the other. We always carry the message, the good way message of the government to our diasporans. We are the people receiving the stones. If you get to Abidjan on your reception, you are the victim because they say you are not telling the government the truth. If you go to Togo, the same thing. If you come to Congo Brazzaville, the same thing. Nigerians are boiling because of their right of voting that is being denied. And you know where you are coming from? The giant of Africa. They are looking down on us. It's going to benefit the government. It's going to benefit also our leaders. There is no hidden thing, there is no fear, there is no anything that is difficult in giving Nigerians and diaspora their voting right. But the encouragement of participating in the system, it makes us to be happy that my senator have my vote, my president have my vote. We are happy when we are given that opportunity. The Commission, as part of its election observation function, regularly observes elections in other countries. This has given the Commission a wide range of first-hand knowledge on how other election management bodies in other countries handle the issue of diaspora voting. I would say the Commission is perhaps far ahead of any other stakeholder here in Nigeria on this matter. So you can challenge us, we are ready. We have taken advantage of every opportunity to engage on this matter and in recent past, the Commission engaged the Senate Committee on Diaspora Voting wherein we discussed extensively on the what, that is, the clarification on the concept of diaspora voting, the why, that is, the rationale and justification for diaspora voting, and the how, that is, the mechanics or options, methodologies that could be available for diaspora voting among various models and options that exist around the world as well as the progress in terms of INEC readiness to commence with diaspora voting and the constraints including challenges and considerations in commence with diaspora voting in Nigeria and the required future action that will be necessary to make Nigeria a diaspora to participate in our election. These details of INEC perspective on this matter will be shared. It is important to know that some 115 countries of the world currently practice one model or another of out-of-country voting. And out of these countries, 28 are African countries. There is no reason why Nigeria is not one of the countries. Clearly, the time is now for diaspora voting in Nigeria. INEC is not a hindrance to diaspora voting. To the Commission, the issue is preaching to the converted. We are converted. We are convinced it is the way to go, and hence we fully support the Afro Abosin. It is just a matter of time for the needful to be done at the legislative level. A study tour to visit to other countries for learning lessons, e.g. in the case of Brazil, where I have personally observed the election, 
it is an offense not to vote, if, uh, regardless of whether you are you are not living in the country or at any time of the papers. Whether you live in America or Britain, you are in Brazil, it's an offense if you fail to vote. In fact, a lot of work has been done. We're, we're starting to collect data. I mean, we've sent quite a lot to INEC. But the key thing, as we have said, is the legal hurdles to making this happen. Mr. President was recently in Ethiopia, and at his meeting with the Nigerians in Ethiopia, he made it clear, and I quote him, on the issue of diaspora voting, I've said this separately, that I'm not against it. However, you will need to convince the National Assembly to amend the relevant laws to make it happen. <laughs> However, are there challenges? Yes. Is it going to be easy? No. Are there reasons of concern? Yes. Are there things to be worried about? Yes. But that is why we're leaving it with the National Assembly. With everything my brother has said, look, first thing is let's be practical. Have a draft bill that will be sent to Parliament. The idea is that, well, a lot of things need to be done. Of all the countries listed, no one country has the same uh, procedure for diaspora voting. So we need to come up with what is ours, what do we want as Nigerian, what's the Nigerianness. As he said, Ghana has passed the bills in 2008. They haven't been able to implement it. Ethiopia just passed a few days ago. Gambia just did the same thing. So I think what matters as going to technical session is how do we make it happen? How do we lobby the National Assembly? How do we convince the National Assembly that it's something desirable? And I believe Nigerians in diaspora deserve to vote. Forget about the $26 billion that you remit and all that. Look at the contributions of Nigerians all over the world. With Trump telling us, no more immigrant visas for you, they are even fighting for us. Even those people are coming on television to say, Nigerians are the best anywhere in the world. The most educated immigrants, you know, developing world economies, and Nigerians are willing to do that for their country. And diaspora voting, we should make it possible for our brothers and sisters in the diaspora to be able to vote. I think the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. But when we all sit down together, have more collaborations, get together, um, have more stakeholders meetings, we can overcome the challenges and come together as a people and decide exactly what we want to do for Nigeria in the diaspora. So I don't need to say anything. <laughs> in diaspora have played a major role and are a major force in the development of Nigeria. The World Bank estimated that global remittances alone grew by 10% from $633 billion in 2017 to $689 billion in 2018. When you look at that number, you know it's an astronomical sum that's coming into this country from diasporans. So diasporans should have the opportunity to determine the leadership of a nation where they're investing so much of their hard-earned money. In Africa, Nigeria is in contest with um, Egypt on who sends more money back home. And we will get to the bottom of that because you all know that at this moment in time we have um, a joint task um, committee ongoing investigating the funds coming in from diaspora from Nigerians abroad. And what is very important is for you to know that we are doing this as a House of Representatives under the leadership of Mr. Speaker because diasporans are indeed very, very important to us. They are a very, very valuable sector. Also, I must give kudos to Nigerians across the world. Why? There are a lot of nations where you have their people leave and don't look back. Once they're gone, they come of all ties to their nation. But here we have you. We have Nigerians in diaspora who go away, create the life they want for themselves, but don't forget home. Keep coming home. Keep investing in home. We appreciate you. More kudos to you. And believe me, I know for a fact that this assembly, the night assembly, is going to give you all the support that's necessary to achieve not to be achieved.
According to World Bank research and analysis, interviews with diaspora groups and individuals across the world, it has shown that granting voting rights to diasporans is an important means of encouraging greater engagement with their origin countries. You already have engagement, so we're looking to get greater engagement. Our Nigerians in diaspora already have a very strong sense of belonging. And with that sense of belonging, we can partner and take our nation to the next level. To date, almost a dozen African countries, for example, Burkina Faso, Mali, South Africa, allow their citizens living abroad to cast their votes. They allow them to retain the right to vote in national elections. For example, in the case of a US diasporans, you go to your embassy when it's time to vote, after you've been duly registered through a, an agreed register, a registration proce process by law, and you go to your embassy during the time of voting, and you are able to cast your votes. As Chairperson House Committee on Diaspora Matters, on behalf of my fellow committee members, under the leadership of Right Honorable Speaker, Mr. Femi Bajabi Amila, let me assure you all, in spite of all the pros and cons of diaspora voting, let me assure you that these issues will be looked into by the Ninth Assembly. I would say, yes, the mandate of the National Assembly is to make law for the good of the people of the country. But in this kind of matter, we are talking about diaspora voting. It is not just enough to talk about legal framework. We must first have what I would call political consensus around the several issues that have been thrown up, even from the study of IAC. And uh, in this regard, I would say that a committee in the Senate who had met with the leadership of INEC, including the general of INEC, to also look at all these I mean, issues. So I rather say that it's very important for us to redirect our energy to the appropriate place. Just like in the Senate of the case of Ghana, making a law is not really the first thing to do. Because if you make a law, and the law is not in sync with reality, it will be what we lawyers call dead letters in the status book. They don't be there, nobody will implement it. So I would rather say some of the issues around which consensus was had needs to first be addressed. One of these is in which election do we even want that solar voting to be involved? We need to agree this across the board before even bringing any legislation to the National Assembly. When you do things, it is not it is not that people are not going to mistake. We go to people are not going to make mistakes. Life is all about mistakes. When you make mistakes, you do correction and then you move on. So we sit on on so many of the issues that has to do with the development, analyzing all the things, why this, why that. Why, when, all we need to do is just start. Just do it. Just, just start from something. You know, because if we're talking about a group of people that, that sends in about $25 billion, that is more than the oil revenue. And all we are saying is that, um, you know, political consensus, legal framework, this and that and that and that, and time is of essence. So, this is actually my own admonition, that in life, there are some things that you just need to start. You just need to do. Bearing that you are going to make mistakes, bearing in mind that you are going to walk from that mistake, rather than to be analyzing, analyzing, and then at the end of the day, everybody dies. So, please, I'm not employing us here to find this energy, to find this drive to 
just do it. You can only vote if you're a resident in Nigeria, more or less. It's kind of so by bringing a bill for diaspora voting at the time, I thought it was the wrong way. Because you cannot use a bill to amend the Constitution. And it was on that basis that we said it was unfortunate that we couldn't take that. That uh, I'm not proud of it, but it was a necessity. And somebody has to, you know, carry that. Uh, the responsibility, and we all did at the time. I have since then spoken to several people. I spoke in Parliament in the UK. I spoke to you. I spoke to Parli in Parliament, and I've spoken and in several fora when people talk about diaspora voting. I am for it. Let's get that clear. But we have to do it right. If we are just done it, hmm? that's why doing it right is important. If we had done it, somebody would have gone to court. And the court would have said it's illegal, null, and void to the extent of its inconsistency with the Constitution. With millions of Nigerians who reside outside our shores, pursuing lives of meaningful achievement in their various fields, have as much a stake in the present and future of Nigeria as those of us who live here. These Nigerians have chosen to pursue their dreams elsewhere, rarely forget the place from whence they come. Our diaspora citizens use their resources to develop businesses and support family members here at home. They invest in their communities, providing scholarships, funding healthcare outreaches, and in some cases, by helping to develop or repair critical local infrastructure. It is not peculiar that they expect to participate in choosing those who lead our politics and administer the affairs of our Nigerian state. The topic of diaspora voting has within a short period of time become a matter of intense public debate. This reflects the capacity of our diaspora citizens to influence the content and tone of public policy conversations here at home. It also causes us to confront the simple but unavoidable reality that this is a subject matter for which we must find resolution within the shortest possible time. This workshop provides an opportunity for all of us to jointly consider the value of the proposals that are currently on offer, listen to the different perspectives, and develop therefrom a workable plan of action for which we can seek and achieve the support of, a government, of government policymakers and the general public. Diaspora voting is not a new concept. In the United States of America, sometimes they call it absentee ballots. In France, in India, in South Africa, amongst others, there are enabling laws and systems that allow a citizen to exercise their fundamental right to participate in choosing the government of their homeland. There are so many issues that surround this wonderful idea. Those are the issues we need to grapple with. It's easy to amend the Constitution, and my doctors will be able to do it. And yes, another success story recorded. Remember last year, we rescued Zainab Aliyu from wrongful arrest and incarceration in Saudi Arabia. And now we have a similar story for the second time in 10 months. The federal government of Nigeria, on the instructions of President Mohamedou Buhari, through agencies such as NITCOM and others, rescued Malam Ibrahim Ibrahim, an indigent of Zamfara State, from being executed by Saudi Arabian authorities over drug-related matters. This is the Help From Home segment. Enjoy the story.
Ha! Not so fast. Look, I'm tired. I want to check out of this country for greener pastures. Just calm down for a moment. Please sit down. <sighs> Do you have a job where you're going to? No, but someone is arranging, you know. Listen, I, listen, listen, Alinko. Checking out of this country without proper planning means one thing. Unimaginable begin. Eh? You know, I've been in the diaspora, but legitimately, doing great things at home and abroad. As I've been saying, without the proper footing abroad, the risk is not worth it. Listen, Alinko, it's better to be home than be trapped abroad. Or even end up in prison. Thanks for being a part of the show. It's been worthwhile. And in case you have anything to share with us, please do not hesitate to do so as we expect feedback on our show. Remember, you can reach us on all our social media platforms on Facebook at Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, on Twitter at NITCOM underscore gov, on our Instagram page at NITCOM underscore gov, and on our website at www.nitcom.gov.ng. You can also join us on DSTV at NTN Network News on Friday at 10.30 a.m., on NTN International on Tuesday at 6 a.m. and 10.05 p.m., on NTN News 24 on Friday at 2.30 p.m., and on Sunday at 11.30 a.m. You can also join us on WAP TV on Monday at 10.30 p.m. I remain your host, Coinsola, at Day Tumbi. See you next time.